Hey guys, so it's been a while since I've made a video, so I thought I would do something fun and artistic and artsy and fingerless gloves. This is something more for the people that uh, watch me on DeviantArt, and uh, something I've been meaning to make for a while was a little video on how I make uh, fractal flames. So I thought what I would do is sit down, like I'm doing now, and show you what I do. So yeah, let's do it. Alright, so to get started, the first thing you're going to want to do is change your background to something involving Helsing. And uh, the program that I use for fractal rendering is called Apophysis 7X. There you go. And uh, fair warning, it is the buggiest program ever. It is terrible in terms of crashing and things like that. Right there, starting it up, I got like three little prompts. But this is the program that I use, and this is a program that a lot of people use, and it works pretty well. I'm using, I've been using a bit of a tutorial that I found a couple years ago. I really recommend finding tutorials and working through them, and then adding on to them, taking things away, and then building on them. Yeah. Yeah, I think I've just said that. <laughs> because if you look at, if you get a cold start into the program, you're not going to have any idea what you're doing. So working through tutorials is the best way to learn what each little variation, each little change does. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go here, and I'm going to make a blank flame. And you're going to have a look at this, and there's nothing there it is empty. Also it's scaled back a lot so I'm going to change my scale to 25 so you can have an even better look at nothing but there is sort of something in there. I mean a big problem that I have is uh, the gamma and the brightness are important in terms of seeing like what in the world this is so you can see it now but when you start a blank flame it all goes down to like zero so you really need to turn those up I'm gonna open the editor which is uh, this little effects here I can't remember what it is in calculus uh, what is it the derivative I believe it's the derivative I can't really remember alright so if you open it up you have a lot of different things you have a lot of different variations you have linear 3d linear uh, sinusoidal, spherical, swirl, horseshoe, polar disk, spiral, a whole list, and some of these are added in using the uh, Apashack uh, plugin pack, where you can choose different things to throw in there, and that's a whole other mess that I'm not going to get into, so I'm just going to use some basic stuff. So what I do is um, give rid of the linear. And the best way to think of these is, imagine this triangle is a sheet of paper, and you want to change the paper in different ways. Like you want to swirl the paper, you want to bend it into a horseshoe, you want to add layers of paper, make it thicker, make it lighter, uh, adding transformations, adding these triangles, uh, as like adding different sheets of paper and moving that sort of like digital origami in a way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of blur and you can see a preview here and then it will later show up on here. Now I'm going to add a new transformation. I'm going to keep the linear on this one. I'm going to change the weight of this to something like 5. Uh, believe in the tutorial that I have linked it is to 5. I'm going to add a little bit of spherical, something like something like that. And you can see this is what I was talking about. It's changing the paper, changing how it looks. So next I'm going to go down to a variation called cross. I'm going to add a little bit of that. And you can see here it's already changing. And here's the final little mix. I'm going to go up here to Edit, Enable, Post Transform. No, Final Transform. My bad. Go up here, get rid of this linear. I'm going to add something called Julia 3D. 
It's gonna do something weird. Watch this. Well, in the world, it disappeared. Anyway, oh, I need to pull it back a bit. <laughs> My bad. Might also help if I change the color to something, you know, visible. There we go. Now you can see that. So I'm gonna let this load a little bit. And here we have something very interesting. Now I'm gonna to go to a tab called variables. And Julia 3D has a power variable that has different values. If you double click it, it goes to negative two, positive two. Changing these variables changes uh, aspects of the flame. So I'm gonna set this on negative two. And now I'm gonna go back to my second transformation. So you can see here, it has a little half border thing that you can turn and turning it does amazing things you can make it bigger smaller and really change how it looks also uh, something you can do feel free to add uh, different parts of it so like you see here it's going to add a little bit of extra to it and I think it looks really cool when all these little extra bits are added so you see here you have this nice mosaic look I think that just looks badass so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to angle it a bit I'm going to go to this adjustment uh, tab button thing <laughs> I'm going to tilt it and what that's going to do is it's going to be sort of an angled view of the paper I'm also going to go here and I'm going to turn down the brightness and turn down the gamma maybe not quite that low something about like this I like fractal flames that have a black background and color in the front I like having that contrast between color and void because I just really love what that does to an image now I'm going to go to this colors tab on the second one I want to change the color speed and moving this little transform color changes the overall color of it because the weight of this is higher than the others it is going to have a bigger effect on the overall image so I'm going to change this and here you can see the preview and the final result and now I'm going to go to the variations I'm going to play with something called Z scale Z translate and Z cone and what this does is it changes sort of the depth of the flame you can see how I can curl it in and out so if I add a little bit of a curl there Z scale you can see I can make it bloom in a way it looks almost like uh, an artichoke I think is the, the best comparison and then if I mess with the Z cone a bit I can sort of make it look like one of those blooming onion things <laughs> This is weighted at 0.5. I'm going to change it down a bit to, that's nice there. So I'm going to remove that and you'll notice that everything is gone. This is because adding a new transformation is sort of like saying, I like what you're doing, but now I'm going to change the overall image more. So when you add a new transformation, if you notice changing the weight changes how big its effect is on the overall image. Now I'm going to add something like, say, spherical. And you'll notice that it's sort of coming into view. But if I take it out, then it's gone. It's bye-bye. This is the part where you can start playing around and doing your own little things, putting a little English on the ball, as it were. You can add crackle, which has a very interesting effect. You can change the cell size something like that sort of like a uh, like a tile floor or a mosaic tile floor you can change the distortion the power the scale of it you can change a lot of things and what I can do as well is something called post transform which is changing it even more but without necessarily changing the entire image basically it changes the variation so if I do something like this can make it bigger or smaller shrink it down about like this 
So it has sort of a uh, hurricane spiral, I would kind of call it. Let's have a look at this. And I think that looks really cool. So we can also go back and change the power of it. So something like... Let's make it a really low power. I believe it was set to 1, so changing it this much should produce an interesting effect. Something we can also do is we can duplicate this. So I'm going to right click, duplicate, and I'm going to move this. And you'll see that it pretty much makes another one. It makes another triangle. And I can move this around. I can put a little spin on the ball. And I can change the power of this as well. I can change the cell size. Change the Z, which is pretty much the uh, depth. Change its scale, and that that makes an interesting effect. So something like this looks really cool. And here's the Z scale. You can see what it does. It does a little bit of changes there. And I'll be honest, I don't know what everything does. I don't think anybody really knows what everything on this program does. But that's the beauty of just playing around with it and seeing what you can make. So here we have something that I think looks really cool. Sort of this explosion inside a flower, just sort of fragmenting. So you know what? I like this. So I'm going to close that out. I might change the color. You want to be careful not to cluster the colors. If the colors get too clustered, then you can't really differentiate the individual little particles and effects and all the nifty bits. So I'm going to let this do its thing. And also you can go back and readjust the gamma, you can readjust the brightness, you can make it super bright, you can make it really dull. If you turn the brightness all the way down and just leave gamma, then you have this really sharp image that's good for some things and iffy for other things. There are some times where you just need that sharpness. Here you can sort of see what I mean. It's really sharp, accurate lines, but it's not very vibrant. So I'm going to keep a little bit of color. And I'm going to add something called depth blur, where I think the best way to describe it is just to give an extreme example. I'm going to set it to 0.5. And you're going to notice here on the preview, the sides look a bit blurrier and it's a bit more focused towards the center, especially on these end pieces. So I'm happy with this. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to go to Render Flame. See, when I first downloaded this program, I thought that was the settings, but that's Render Flame. Now, what I like to do is I usually render, I used to render at 1920 by 1080. Now I render at 34. <laughs> See if I can remember, what is it? 3460 by, what is it? 2160 by, 3240 by 2160. That is a 4K uh, resolution. That is a 16 by 9 4K resolution. And what I'll do next is I'm going to hit start, but I'm not going to hit start while I'm recording because that would be very, very slow. And I don't know what it would do to my computer. Because last time I tried to render a complicated image, it crashed my computer, and I was not happy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this, I'm going to come back when this is finished, and then you will see the fruits of your labor if you followed along with this. Which, you know, anyway, I will see you in just a minute. So, there you have it. There is how I go about making fractal flames and I would really encourage all of you anyone who watches this to give them a try uh, they are a little bit uh, hard on the computer you know a bit stressful on it but really anyone can do it it just takes a little bit more time if if you're doing this on like a laptop it might take a little bit more time for these to process and work but you can still make them you just have to be a little bit more patient but anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to go down below and leave a like because I like likes. 
they make they make me happy. And if you want to keep following me for what in the world I make, like whatever, if it's fractal talking computer, I don't even know what I do on this channel. But if you want to follow me around for more of what I do when I do it, then hit that subscribe button, and I will see you next time. Peace.